Do you like weapons, armor, samurai, knights and pasta? Please subscribe to my channel, become a noble one and join the noble army. I have a lot of miniatures. I mean, look at that. I post pictures of my miniatures, painting and battle reports on my Instagram. So if you're curious, check it out. Given I also post pictures of pasta, but nobody's perfect. Hello, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. In the Roman period, Roman legionaries had to face loads of different threats coming in the forms, of course, of weapons utilized by their opponents. Now, of course, to keep the soldiers protected, they had massive shields, but they were also clad in metal armor. Now, we do know that the Romans fared pretty well in combat for a multitude of reasons, but among these many reasons, the equipment that they were wearing, the fact that every single soldier was, had access not only to good weapons, but also to relatively good uh, equipment in terms of armor, also played an important role. Now, we know that Roman armor was pretty good at keeping the soldiers safe from the weapons of the time. Now, from a classical perspective, a sword, a medieval sword such as this one, the late 13th century Oxshot type 12, will be utterly futuristic but would roman armor be able to protect soldiers if they were hit with something like this no problem all right that concludes the video thank you for watching roma invicta i'm joking <laughs> can you imagine like mass unsubscribe to be fair and give you a professional answer then in the majority of cases roman armor would be inadequate against medieval weapons just the choice of a sword such as this one is not really the best to represent the sort of very powerful weapons that were used in the middle ages by medieval knights and men-at-arms alike so the real answer is that it would depend case by case but there will be many situations in which medieval uh, weapons will completely go through a roman armor and we'll see why in a minute i'm gonna go a little technical later on the video but there will be also uh, some situations in which some medieval weapons wouldn't really work against the roman soldier so let's have a look at two examples of extremely powerful medieval weapons that were available for medieval soldiers men at arms and knights and did not exist in the classical period the first one of the two is going to be the lance used by a knight on horseback. Now you might be asking, but didn't the Romans have to deal with stuff like that anyways? Like when they had to face populations that were mostly mounted in combat. And yes, they had to face something similar, but ultimately completely different. When you use an actual spear on horseback in the sort of way that it was done in the classical period, although it might appear like a similar situation, it's actually a completely different setup uh, with a completely different kind of power than a lance used by a medieval knight. Night. One thing is a soldier using his horse as, of course, a fighting platform, and he's trying to stab you from it. But a medieval knight is using a lance. A lance is a better weapon than a spear on horseback. First, you've got more range. But then in the medieval period, they would use a specific technique. They would put it underneath their armpit, and that would give it a stronger and solid grip. Pair that with a pair of stirrups. And if we look in the later period, also a lance rest, which would be this, that you can see here in this picture, it will act as a shock absorbent so ultimately the amount of power that a lance in full charge from a medieval knight who has access to all of these development and improvements is going to be incredible would a medieval knight in full charge be able to penetrate roman armor if it hits the soldier properly in the majority of cases yes so far i've been talking about power but what we're actually talking about is kinetic energy transferred to the target in order to go through and penetrate a wrought iron plate of 1.9 millimeters you're going to need to generate more than one 100 joules. A medieval knight in full charge, particularly in the late Middle Ages, is going to easily generate between 200 and 260 joules. There are many other factors that influence this, such as the saddle use, the speed reached by the horse, but we're talking in general here. And of course, as the plate in question is thinner, you could easily penetrate deep enough to kill. The second example is going to be that of very powerful distance weapons, missile weapons, ranged weapons, such as medieval crossbows and bows. Now, bows existed already in the classical period, and the Roman had to deal with bows and arrows so weren't their armor or their testudo formation already enough to deal with those and the answer is yes the testudo and the armor that romans were wearing was good to face classical period bows but you have to imagine that if the romans had to face a unit of english longbowmen that were using bows with the draw weight and power 
of the sort of bows that we found in the Mary Rose, or if they had to deal with very powerful crossbows, such as those used by the Genoese crossbowmen, then that would be a completely different kettle of fish. It doesn't matter that we still call them bows. The draw weight and the power of these bows would probably, depending of course on the distance and the accuracy, but they will most likely be able to go through Roman male, Roman segmentata, Roman muscolata, etc. So why is that? You see, these weapons were extremely powerful and that is why armor had to develop. It's a constant race of development between the increase of power of weapons and the increase of protective capabilities of armor. This happened in Europe a lot because European countries were fighting all the time, which ignited continuous research and improvement. When we're looking at the sort of armor that were used by medieval mountain nobility, we're not only looking at a better kind of steel, because we are. I mean, in the Roman period, of course, you would have found a lot of iron, you would have found some steel sometimes, so it would be low carbon steel the most. Instead, with the medieval period coming along, yes, you would still have some iron armor, yes, you would still have some low carbon steel, but the further along you go into the medieval period, the majority of people who were doing this professionally had access to medium carbon steel and very well heat-treated carbon steel. For example, in this case, my Roman armor is actually mild steel, whereas this is heat-treated medium carbon steel. The difference in the defensive capabilities of these two kinds of steel is enormous. Could they not heat-treat mild steel? Well, you can, but it doesn't do anything. On my channel, I mostly talk about weapons and armor, but if you're also interested in day-to-day -day things, then lately I've been working on a project about the looks of women in ancient times. It's a collaboration with my girlfriend, you'll find a link in the description below, to the video where we have done the research and created the looks of a Roman woman. Check it out and say hello from the community of noble ones. But also it's the shape. I mean if you look at the breastplate and this is a 14th century breastplate of course if I had to compare my Roman uh, equipment with 15th century 16th century the gap would be enormous but even in the 14th century which is the period when uh, plate armor starts to become even more and more common uh, you see that this breastplate is rounded. Now originals tend to be even a little more rounded than this one but this already kind of gives us an idea. The reason for this is that any lance, any thrust, any missile that tries to penetrate this will have to deal with a rounded surface rather than a flat surface which helps dissipate the force and encourage the weapon to glance off. Roman armor instead tends to be flat and that doesn't help uh, against those kind of powerful weapons. It was good and it did the job back in the day but of course 500 years, a thousand years of de technological war military development will come up with better solutions and as I said if you go into the 15th century they even had to come up with sort of kinds of armor that was made of several different layers of, of steel such as the sort of Milanese suits and for example this one here that I'm having produced that you can see has got in the very core in the center of mass uh, you have two layers of steel. Now don't get me wrong Roman armor is also ingenious and sometimes you also need to deal with two layers of steel such as in this case like for example if you attack me here then you'll have to deal with this plate and the breastplate underneath that's two layers of steel but that doesn't happen as much and it's not as globular as medieval it's not as well engineered as medieval armor and the reason for that again is the sort of threat that weapons posed in the medieval period which was completely different to the sort of threat that you would have to face in the classical period. So what about shields? Well we do know that the Romans utilized very large shields for the majority of the time with some exceptions but sometimes shields are not enough and uh, depending on the strength of the bow some arrows might go through uh, at least partially and again it's very difficult to remove arrows from a shield once they it's penetrated particularly if they have a lot of penetrative power and you can see that at Todd's workshop channel because he makes all sorts of videos about this highly suggested so even though the Romans were top-notch in terms of military technology at the time, if you had this sort of equipment and you found yourself in a late medieval battlefield, you would be in trouble. Unless their general is a complete idiot and yours is a genius, which I mean, can happen. 
But at the beginning of the video I did say that there are some weapons that even though they are medieval and technically futuristic, Roman armor would still work well at defending you against. So going back to medieval swords and then we're going to look at some other weapons as well like maces and whatnot, but um, medieval swords, they are of course better than Roman swords because they have a better steel, sometimes even high carbon steel, spring steel. Uh, they are longer because now uh, medieval smiths have mastered the usage of steel. You gain more reach and they tend to be pointier because they tend to specialize more and more uh, against armor. So if you try and slash a Roman with this, it doesn't matter that this is high carbon steel. Uh, it doesn't matter that this can be very sharp. You're still not going to cut through plate and you're not going to cut to, through Roman mail. And I'm going to talk about Roman mail and medieval mail in a moment to understand what the difference would be. Um, but no, you're not going to cut through it. As you start having swords that are specialized to go through the gaps of armor, such as the S-stock, for example, the tuck, which is one of my favorite swords, by the way, then a sword like that could be used effectively against the Roman, um, given not an easy thing to do considering the scutum, but still possible. It could also be protective against maces and warhammers, but of course maces and warhammers, they are very good at hitting you and hurting you through armor. Now, I have spoken about this in the past and I'd like to sort of clarify a little bit. Yes, these could be considered anti-armor weapons in the sense that if you get hit with this full force on the helmet, even though it's not going to perhaps crack your skull thanks to the skull of the helmet, but you're still going to feel it. it you might you know, start throwing up, it might stun you. There are a lot of other things that can happen. You can hurt your spine. And remember, medieval helmets tend to be more optimized than, um, well, it depends on the helmet, but they tend to be more optimized against these kind of blows as well. Uh, the Roman helmets, they are slightly rounded, but they're not uh, as rounded as sugarloaf medieval helmets. So again, it's a similar situation. The more, the further up you go into the Middle Age, the more armor shape becomes functional more and more but with that being said if someone hit me full force here um, it doesn't automatically mean that my armor is dealt with there are a lot of variables that need to be considered it's not like every hit with a mace or every hit with a warhammer against someone in armor is going to put them out of action again loads of different variables so Roman armor could function well in those cases or perhaps you might get still a broken rib regardless of the armor it would really depend also another Another thing is coverage. Roman armor tends to cover less than full med a full medieval harness. In this case, it doesn't really matter if you're talking about mail or if you're talking about plate, because even if we compare Roman mail and medieval mail, you'll notice the medieval mail starts to protect more. Uh, medieval mail tends to be longer and 12th century even reaches and protects your hands. Roman hands tends to be unprotected and so for the arms, exception being the manica, but usually was used only on the right arm. And it did it protect this part of your arm, whereas medieval male would. A medieval hobbit would be longer, you would have protection for your legs as well, for your feet, and you would have mail on your head. In terms of the quality of the rings, well, Roman rings were quite good. I mean, you're talking about half solid, half riveted rings. So riveted male in the Roman period as well. Again, most of the times it would be iron or very, very low carbon steel sometimes. In the medieval period again, you would still have sometimes iron mail, but you would also start having better and better kind of steel mail. So medieval mail usually would have better coverage, better material. But having said this, I'd like to enter the final part of this video, which is when does something stop being Roman and becomes medieval? Now bear with me for a second. Now I know there's scholars and historians that disagree uh, when talking about the length of the medieval period. Some people say it's from 1000 to 1500 and some people say it's from the 5th century to the 16th. Now for the purposes of this video I'd like to talk about the longer version of the medieval period. So from 500 AD to 1500 AD. Let's say that you are a 20 year old boy and you have inherited some mail from your father and he has inherited it from his father. So this is definitely late Roman mail. It is 499. All right, fantastic. So a few months pass by and another few months pass by. Let's say it's now 501 AD. Are you still wearing Roman mail or is this medieval mail? Most likely a lot of Roman equipment was reused, repurposed. Perhaps some of the metal was removed and recreated, or maybe even melt down. But we do know that um, a lot of Roman mail, you wouldn't just 
throw it away to buy something new just because there is a difference of three years uh, because now you want something medieval remember the medieval people did not call their period medieval the medieval period it is in the middle middle ages from our perspective for a roman it will be the future for a medieval person it will be the present so if you had a functional shirt of mail you could wear that or you could even improve it if you had the money. Perhaps you didn't have the money to buy a completely new shirt, but you did have the money to, for example, have a hood added, or perhaps to have the sleeves lengthened. I mean, that can happen also to mail that is a hundred years old. We do know of accounts of medieval battles where people were using equipment that was like 50 or 60 years old. Sure, if you are a noble, if you're mounted nobility, then yes, you have the money to get the top-notch state-of-the-art technology but not everybody could that's why coming back to the original question of this video very much will depend when we say medieval weapons then we really need to decide what 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 period are we talking about like 1000 AD versus 30 AD then there will be a huge massive enormous difference but if you're talking about 500 against 600 well not that much but let me know what you think I'd like to hear your opinions in the comments below and I will see you again on Saturday for my next video Thank you very much for watching and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Salvete!